This is the gospel of our Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. This is the story of our salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad Toby was up here today because Toby is a French-speaking lady. And have you ever noticed how nice things sound when you say them in French? Faux leather, faux stone. You know what it means, faux? Fake. Fake leather, fake stone. If you have a faux leather jacket, it just sounds so much better than saying, this is my fake leather jacket, doesn't it? Now, do you know what RSVP means? No, you don't. I'm going to tell you right now. Nobody in this church knows what RSVP means. We said, RSVP, if you're going to come to the services, back when we started having outdoor services, three people were going to come, and we thought, is it worth it? And then the whole parking lot was full. RSVP, respondez s'il vous plaît. Please respond. S'il vous plaît means please, but in actuality, if you transliterate it, it means respond if, if you're willing to respond. Respond if it's your pleasure to respond, not let us know if you're coming or not. Now, we have spent all of Lent looking at stories about Jesus at the table with people. We said he was there with the uninvited, the unclean, the unwelcome, the unorthodox, the unwashed, the unnumbered. Jesus liked to eat. We just heard in the epistle lesson, not the epistle lesson, the lesson from Acts today, the New Testament lesson about Jesus is going to eat with the disciples after he's raised from the dead. He likes a good meal. He likes table fellowship. How many of you have a nice dinner planned later today? How many of you have to cook it? Oh, well. Well, God bless you anyway. Jesus will be there with you at your meal just like he's at every meal and like he's at the meal today. And there are more stories in Scripture about Jesus at the table. Mary and Martha, those who were like sisters to him, and he goes to eat with them. And Martha's doing all the work, and she complains and fusses at Jesus, saying, tell my sister to get off her behind and help me. That's a paraphrase, but that's what she was saying. Tell her to get up and help me. And what does Jesus say? Martha, Martha, there are two things to do, and she chose the right one over you. Now, if I had been Martha, I probably would have said, then Jesus, fix your own daggone supper, but we know that they had a meal together. Then there's Zacchaeus, the little guy who goes up the tree, right? What does Jesus say to him? Come down because I'm going to go eat at your house today. Jesus is one who will invite himself to dinner at your house. And it was scandalous because Zacchaeus wasn't just a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. And, you know, if you're going to go to his house and eat with him, you're probably just like him. Then there's the prodigal son. There was a Sunday on Easter that I preached the, I preached the prodigal son every Sunday during Lent that year. And then on Easter Sunday, we started out with the story of the resurrection and moved to the prodigal son. It's one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture because people get it, don't they? I've told you before, this is the story I use now. If I meet somebody who doesn't know Jesus Christ, I don't start with the garden and the fall. Because I'm telling you what, especially confirmation classes, because you have a room full of 12 and 13-year-olds and you say, there were two naked people and a talking snake. You've lost everybody in the room already. But if you can say to people, there were two sons and one really screwed up and the other one did everything that was right, you've got them hooked. And what happens when the son comes home and the father sees him and runs toward him with his arms open? He says, kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a barbecue. We're going to have a party. And the older brother comes, and what is his response? I'm not going in there with him. You can't make me have fun. You can't make me have a party. You can't make me enjoy this. And the father says, this brother of yours was dead, and he's alive again. Just this week, we read the story of Passover, how Passover became Jesus' last meal with his disciples, how Jesus' last supper becomes the Lord's Supper, how the Lord's Supper becomes communion and the Eucharist and Thanksgiving, how it becomes for us sacrament. This is how I knew, and I said it the other night if you tune into our service, and this is how I always have known that I was called to the ordained ministry because I am called to a ministry of sacrament, baptizing and Holy Communion. Because when I was a kid, I found myself always reading the pastor's part. You know, when you're following along in the hymnal, I was always, Mark, were you doing the same thing, reading the pastor's part? Because you knew that was what you were supposed to be saying because sacraments are the presence and power of Jesus Christ that we can touch, that we can hold in our hand, that we can taste, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. That's what we're going to do this morning. Sacrament is power. And what we've talked about every single week is guess who's coming to dinner. And today it's guess who's invited to dinner. Everybody is invited to dinner. Everyone in the world, everyone of every time and every place. 
because just as the Jews sat down with Moses when they celebrate the Passover, when we celebrate Holy Communion, which we're going to do today, we celebrate Holy Communion we're sitting with Jesus at the Last Supper. We're with each other here gathered today, and we're also at the kingdom that is to come. So everyone that we know who we've lost, especially this year when there's been so much loss, will be at communion with us this morning because all are invited. Just as we read in Acts, Jesus shows no partiality. Everyone is included in the invitation. So everybody's included. Now, I said earlier that we have been warned against singing even outside. So when I was looking up the words to come to the table of mercies, I found a song that I've never heard before by a group called the Sidewalk Prophets. And I thought, I could just read that and sit down. Now, on Easter Sunday, pastors could just read the Easter story and say, go live it, amen, amen. But this is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. Oh, the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come meet this motley crew of misfits, these liars and these thieves. There's no one unwelcome here, so that sin and shame you brought with you, you can leave it at the door. Let mercy draw you near. Come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. To the thief and the doubter, the hero and the coward, the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's been let down, all the lost, you have been found, all who have been labeled right or wrong, to everyone who hears this song, come to the table, Come join the sinners. You have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. That is what we're here to do. We're here, we're a bunch of misfits, aren't we? If we're honest, we're misfits. We're a motley crew. We're not who we intend to be in Christ Jesus, but thanks be to God who loved us enough to come looking for us when we were lost. Thanks be to God who comes running toward us with arms wide open. Thanks be to God who says, because you're home, I'm going to set a feast for you. Thanks be to God who has created a feast in the kingdom of heaven that has no end. So if you have lost someone that you've loved today, when you take communion, understand that they are at your side taking it with you. You can't see them. Understand that you're at the table with Christ at the Last Supper. Understand that all this is for you. All you have to do, though, is respond. Not just if you please, not if it's all right with you. Please, for the love of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, respond to him. Respond. Say, yes, Lord, I will be happy to sit at your table. Yes, Lord, I will go forth from this place, renewed, refreshed, and redeemed. Yes, Lord, I will take the story of your resurrection with me wherever I go. Yes, Lord, I will sit at your table and eat with you. And I will invite everybody I meet to come here whether they're deserving, whether they're not deserving, whether they're unwashed, unclean, unloved, unrepentant, call them anyway and tell them that we have found the grace that makes us whole. Happy Easter to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Oh, now don't sing. You're saying it like, nah, Christ is risen, maybe. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Amen and amen. Now we're going to sing that other come to the table little song, and then we're going to share in the meal that makes us whole. Mm-hmm. 